CIA has come in on behalf of those multinational companies. You start a huge covert war that you intend is going to be secret. It's not secret from the Russians. It's certainly not secret from the Laotians who are getting shot at, or the Angolans, or the Nicaraguans, or whoever it is. It's covert from the American taxpayer and voter. And uh, a lot of people make a lot of money off of it. Um, and it attracts criminals. And it has every single time. Who are the names, the faces, behind these covert activities? Some, like Oliver North, General Secord, Albert Hakim, are practically household names. But Daniel Sheehan, chief legal counsel for the Christic Institute, a public interest law firm, believes there are other influential players involved. There exists, in operation now, a secret team of some two dozen men, former Central Intelligence Agency covert operatives, former U.S. Pentagon arms suppliers who have joined together in a private enterprise outside of the control of the American government, either the Congress or the President, who are mounting their personal wars around the world. Whether there is actually an organized secret team or simply a loose association of individuals, it is clear that there are a number of people who have been working actively behind the scenes in these covert operations. Some of the names are Theodore Shackley, who was Assistant Deputy Director of Operations for the Central Intelligence Agency as of 1976, under George Bush, who was CIA Director at the time. Thomas Kleins, who worked as a case officer under Shackley in Miami and in Laos. Rafael Chichi Quintero, an anti-Castro Cuban who worked under Kleins and was allegedly recruited by the CIA as an assassin. General John Singlaub, who worked with Shackley and Kleins in Vietnam and was in charge of the CIA's special operations over the border into Laos. General Richard Secord, who supervised the air operations into Laos and was later assigned to the Pentagon where he was put in charge of arms sales to Iran. Albert Hakim, who was a salesman for U.S. weapons companies and a middleman in the Iran-Contra affair. These are the men who have been stirring the, the pot around the world to instigate these wars uh, on the, the side of the right wing. And that's the group that we're dealing with right here who are making war around the world for their own personal profit. Revolutionary troops such as these have invaded Castro's leftist island fortress, reportedly rallied by a mysterious coded radio message. Alert! Alert! From the sea and it was after the failed invasion of Cuba at the Bay of Pigs in 1961 that Theodore Shackley, as CIA station chief in Miami, and his assistant Thomas Kleins, began working with Rafael Quintero and other right-wing Cubans to overthrow the Castro government. <laughs> In 1965, Shackley and Kleins were transferred to Laos, where Shackley became CIA station chief, Kleins his assistant once again. It was here in Southeast Asia that they teamed up with General Secord and Singlau. And they there began running the secret war in Laos and Cambodia and Thailand. Uh, everybody in the United States basically thought the war was going on in Vietnam. In fact, there was a major dirty war, covert war, that was fought primarily through assassinations uh, of people that were suspected sympathizers of the path at Lao or other people who were not terribly sympathetic to the Western powers. When Theodore Shackley was promoted to director of CIA Western Hemisphere Operations, he supervised the plans to overthrow the democratically elected president of Chile, Salvador Allende. Allende, a socialist, had promised to nationalize the copper mines and other industries and posed a threat 
to U.S. business interests in Chile. After a bloody coup, Allende was replaced by a right-wing military dictator, Augusto Pinochet, whose security forces brutally murdered and tortured thousands of political dissidents. Shackley moved on, returning to Southeast Asia. By that time, the writing was on the wall. The United States was going to be pushed out of Southeast Asia. It was clear that the, that the Viet Cong were going to prevail under Ho Chi Minh. And so what these men began to do, they began to pilfer hundreds of tons of ammunition and military equipment out of Vietnam. They began to construct a covert war capacity that was unknown to the United States Congress, that didn't require supervision by the president, but would pursue the mission that they viewed as their ultimate mission. And that is to attempt to vanquish any people who didn't support the United States foreign policy and who were socialist or communist anywhere in the world. But then came Watergate, a president forced to resign, and the American people, disillusioned by White House corruption and lies, wanted a change. In 1976, Jimmy Carter was elected president. He and new CIA director Stansfield Turner began to clean house, pushing out nearly 800 men from CIA covert operations. When all these covert operators were fired in the 1970s, they didn't just start uh, opening restaurants or working in bookstores. They were people who were very skilled in uh, covert manipulation of political process. And they essentially ganged up to uh, find and then elect a candidate who would put them back in the covert operations business. And Reagan and Bush were only too eager to be that kind of candidate. In the late 70s, Shackley, Kleins, and Secord worked together in a company called Eatsco. Eatsco was formed in order to ship weapons from the U.S. to Egypt. As in the Iran sales, large profits were taken from these deals. The man who provided the financing for Eatsco was Edwin Wilson. Shackley and Kleins and Quintero, who used to visit my farm out there in Virginia, saw that, uh, you know, I guess I was prosperous, and if I could do it, obviously they could do it, and they figured they would like, as soon as, soon as they left the, the government, to get involved in business with me. In 1983, Wilson was convicted of supplying arms to Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. Now serving 52 years in federal prison, Wilson asserts that he has merely taken the fall for his superiors and ex-business partners Theodore Shackley and Thomas Kleins. Because Kleins was getting out of the CIA and so was Shackley and so I would fund an organization and these people would all be in it. So it was Kleins, Shackley, Secord, Van Marbon and myself, five of us, uh, five of us would have this organization. It would be with 20% each of us. I would fund it for $500,000. What's important about this Eatsco company is that it's a kind of precedent in the Ed Wilson style for the Hakim Secord enterprise in the Iran-Contra affair. You have a government-arranged sale of arms, and people with connections to the government get to move the arms. They rip off the government for a very hefty profit or surplus. It was done in the case of Eatsco by Kleins and company, and it was done in the Iran-Contra affair by Secord and Hakim. 